in the late nights. And I'm not going to try to act like that has not happened, okay? That, that there has not been a time where, you know, hormones whoo, through the roof. We may look different and live in different countries, yet our stories are knitted with the same threads of excitement, uncertainties, challenges, and victories. As we journey through the ups and downs of life, it is our undeniable will and God's strength that propel us to joy after pain, smile after frowns, and ups after downs. We were born to win. We were destined to greatness. We are overcomers. Welcome to God's Scoops, Raw and Unedited Stories. Welcome to Raw and Unedited Stories where stories are told to uplift, encourage, and brighten your day. I am Patricia Daly, your host. Today with us is Dr. Kyla Pitcher. She is a beautiful, smart, and witty professional who travels the world with friends on exciting adventures, but finds it a bit of a struggle at 40 plus years and still a virgin to find a suitable husband. Someone to rub her achy feet, whisper sweet nonsense in her ear, or pour a warm cup of chocolate after a long day's work. Which sensible man would pass this beautiful chaste woman, by the way, and not holler? Hey, hey, what do these men really want? Meet Dr. Kyla Pitcher to unravel these questions. Welcome, Dr. Pitcher. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, what, what, what I'm going to do is just ask you to introduce yourself to, your, to our audience. Okay. Uh, I'm Kyla Pitcher. I am from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I um, am, as Pat said, 40 plus. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say, 40 plus. And uh, I uh, recently returned to my hometown, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, to, uh, to be a, a caregiver to my mom, uh, who is having some some health challenges at this time. So uh, I stepped down from, from my role. I was uh, an administrator at uh, Alabama A&M University in Huntsville, Alabama. I was operating as their interim vice president for student affairs. And uh, I, uh, I sold my place and I moved home. So I'm here with my parents and this is a uh, a new a new journey for me, but I'm very glad to to be home and doing that. And now I'm teaching online, teaching music, and all that good stuff. Awesome, awesome, Doctor Pitcher. So I know our audience they can't wait to hear your story. So tell us your story. Okay, so <laughs> where do I be? okay? I think I know where to begin. Um, you know, I uh, I had the wonderful, wonderful privilege of being introduced to the Lord at at an early age. It was the absolute best thing that could ever happen to me. Um, I I I was brought up in church. Um, you know, I remember being four years old and my mom working with me and working with me until I had the Lord's Prayer memorized and standing up in front of church and reciting it. I mean, I always remember church and prayer and God being a part of my life. But there came a time um, when I got in my, uh, I guess I was in my my preteens, may maybe from about age 11 to about 14, um, that I went through some questioning. You know, I went to church because I was supposed to. I prayed because it was something expected, but I didn't feel that I really knew God 
I believed in him because I was told that he was real and this was, you know. Um, and so I, I noticed that I started praying this prayer. I remember praying a prayer every night. I go, well, Lord, I don't know if I really know you or if I really believe in you, but, you know, I'm just going to say thank you for this day and good night. It'd be nice if I really could know you. And, you know, it was something that I could be that frank with him. Yeah. You know, at that age. But he was listening. I believe he was really listening because over time, I remember always saying, you know, I don't know that I really know you or that I really feel this way. I wish that I could be, I could mean it. I wish I could really know you. And I guess he had something really planned for me because by age 16, by age 16, I had an encounter with him that absolutely shifted the trajectory of my life. Um, why 16? I'm not really sure, but I'm glad that it happened at 16. I think if it had happened any later, I probably would have done a whole lot of other things that I would have had to be reeled in from. But um, I, I remember being 16 and being very, very interested in boys. Um, I, I was raised, I, I grew up as an only child. Yeah. Um, and so I, you know, the, I, my friends were the friends in the neighborhood and the girls in the neighborhood. And I remember we used to, we'd go to each other's houses. We discovered makeup. We put on makeup, use the curling iron, fix up our hair and, um, and go walking in the neighborhood to see if we would be noticed by some of the neighborhood boys. <laughs> <laughs> and oh my gosh, I tell you, it was um it was really something because I didn't feel like I was the prettiest in the group of girls. I did right. not, you know, and I didn't always get noticed uh, by by the guys. I really didn't. Uh but I can remember um getting dressed up in this outfit that I found at some store that was, it was black and the, the fabric was a little thin. Mm -hmm. So you could kind of see through it a little bit. Uh -huh. It was cute, sleeveless. And I put on a headband back then, you know, headbands were popular. So I put this black headband around my head with my hair curled and had on my sandals and we went walking. I felt particularly cute wow. and sexy. 16, okay. Um, there was, a, there was a, a Sunday school teacher, Polly Johnson. She is now Reverend Polly Johnson. She is a minister, but she and her husband were Sunday school teachers at my church and um, you know, she took, they both took such an interest in me and right. other kids. And she had um, had an encounter herself, her whole family. They had started visiting this other church and they got introduced to uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Um, and they, uh, they were really excited about the energy and the fire that they were experiencing at this other church. And they just wanted to share it with everyone. And so uh, Polly, she asked my mom if I could go with her to visit this other church. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I stood her up twice. She came one time. I don't know what happened. I ended up somewhere. So she said, oh, it's all right. I will try another time. So my mom scheduled another time. She came and something came up and she's like, all right. So she came this third time and I was in this outfit. I had been walking in the neighborhood and I was tired and I might've been sad because none of the guys were really talking to me. And so I went in and took a nap. Right. And I, uh, she, she knocked on the door I said, you know, Harriet, uh, Kyla's supposed to come with me today. And my mom said, oh, Polly, I'm sorry, Kyla's sleeping. And she said this, she said, I don't know what it is that's got me really wanting to take this child to church with me. Mm. But if you don't wake her up and have her come with me this time, I'm not going to come back anymore. I'm not going to ask again. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. And it's something about the expression on her face, what was in her voice that really grabbed my mom. My mom saw the seriousness of it and and my mom woke me up. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, that really upset me. I mean, ticked me off. I was like, you woke me up out of a really good nap to go to church with this lady and I don't know where I'm going. So I got up with a bit of an attitude. I did. And, uh, you know, I said, can I wear what I have on? You know, and she said, yeah, you can. Even though I knew what I had on wasn't really very appropriate. <laughs> right. Yeah. And this wasn't, this wasn't a Sunday. This was like a Wednesday, you know, Bible service. It wasn't a Sunday service. Okay. So, um, I got in the car and I said to myself, I'm not going to speak to them. I wouldn't talk. I sat in silence with this look on my face. And I said to myself, I will not, I'm going to sit through this. I'm going to listen to what they say and I'm coming home and I will have done my duty. And she better not this or that, just really a real attitude. Get to the church. Right. Church full of people, full of people. And immediately when I walked in, I noticed such a difference from from my church. Not that you know, no shade, okay, to 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 my former church, Belfair. But I mean, the the atmosphere was electric. It was electric. Oh. You walked in, and the worship started. The music was beautiful, and people sang with an intensity. And a, it was like yeah. everybody in the room was really excited about being there. Mm-hmm. And I felt, you know, I felt cold. I kept shivering. And I turned to her and I said, do they have the air turned up in here or something? You know, it's because they, she wasn't shivering. I went with her and her daughters. She had three daughters. And I, I was like, why aren't they shaking? I, every so many minutes I'd shiver and then stop and then shiver. Um, she said, we're fine. You know, so I went on, the pastor gets up at some point and, and he starts to preach. First, he sat at the piano and he played. And that really got my attention because music is my thing. So the worship had already gotten my attention. Mm -hmm. The fact that people were singing with such conviction. And then, and then the pastor plays something beautiful on the piano, then gets up from the piano and starts to talk. And I mean, he talked. He didn't like preach at you, but he just talked and talked. And it felt like what he was saying at that time was he like he was talking directly to me. Yeah. And I started crying. I just, I just, everything in me broke. You know, that tough Kyla that was like, I'm going to sit through this and I'm not going to give them the satisfaction. She was out the window. I started crying. And before I knew it, you know, he, he did what you would say as an altar call because he was like, I know that I'm speaking to some of you here. The Lord's calling you. He's been calling you. And he wants you to come home. He wants you to He wants you to be closer. You've been wondering if he's real. You've been, oh my goodness. Kylo, <sighs> Kylo I, I, I'm listening to you and I'm thinking you were looking for a boy, a man that day and you really found a man. Sure did. Yes. I you really did. found a man, like the woman at the well, right? You found a oh man. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. That is, it's Go amazing ahead. that you would say that about the woman at the well, because that's one of my favorite stories of the, in the Bible. And I feel like I identify with her. Yes. E everything changed. Everything. When she met him. And that was your real day of surrender, full surrender to the calling of Jesus Christ on, upon your life. And now as a single woman, uh, an educated, uh, witty, beautiful woman who is still seeking a life partner, an earthly life partner, what has that journey been like? Well, you know, uh, it's been interesting. I, uh, I have to say that, you know, after the that encounter and really giving my life to the Lord, I went through a season where I wasn't so much interested in boys anymore. I just really wanted to learn everything I could and know everything I could about God. Mm -hmm. I um, 
And that went on, you know, for it went on through the remainder of my teens to the degree that I was in high school and got connected with, you know, whatever Christian group was there. And right. I just wanted to be around other people that felt the same way. Right. But uh, but eventually, you know, that that did come back around. I am human. Hello. And I did <laughs> start getting interested again. And I said, you know, but I but I knew that I wanted to be connected with someone who had the same values because I knew just all of a sudden when I had this spiritual transformation, because when I invited the Lord in that day, and it was July 20th, 1988. That's how that's how etched it is in my, you know, I I knew that I didn't want to live any other way. I knew that I wanted to be pure. I knew that I wanted to wait and to to have a husband. I knew that, you know, being sexually active and things like that wasn't the way. It's and it's almost like I had a knowing. It's like God came in and just washed and kind of and just purified, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And so I was looking and hoping that I would meet someone who felt that way. Now, I'm going to say this to you that, uh, you know, I wasn't always on the straight and narrow. Mm -hmm. It is so important to, to surround yourself with a community of people that can help fortify you. And, you know, once you give your life to the Lord and you make those choices and decisions, you need everything possible uh, to help sustain you. And, and of course, being in the spirit, praying, saying in the word, being strong in that because temptations come. Right. Yeah. And temptations came, you know, um, and, but, but even though temptations came, God was really gracious and he kept me. Um, he, I never went so far uh, that I ended up just completely giving in, but I wasn't a wallflower either. So mm -hmm. there you go. Well, and well, um, so, when I say wall, huh? Go ahead. Go ahead. When I say wallflower, you know, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't just completely pure. I mean, I did kind of fool around, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes because there were some really cuties that came along. I have to say, <laughs> you know, the the enemy will send. He will send what you like yes. in your direction. And he knew what I liked because I was, I had been vocal about what I liked, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, you know, the they, they'd come along and really handsome and smooth talking. And especially when I got to college. Mm -hmm. uh, but God always reeled me. He never let me get so far that it was just crazy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He had, there's a song that I've heard sung in some of the churches called God's Got a Hook in Me mm -hmm. and I Don't Want to Be Loosed. It was like, I felt like there was a hook and that he could just reel me and he'd reel me back closer. And so um, I I ended up connecting with some, some friends in college by, by my... Uh, you know, the end of my freshman year who were really on fire for God. And so I was able to go through my my uh, college experience and, and hang on pretty tight. But I'll just put it this way. There came a point because I still, I, I'd have, a few, I had a couple of slip ups where I'd kind of say, you know, when you get older, there's an expectation. You know, and there's an expectation, you know, men, some of them don't, they're like, I don't want to just go out with you and hold your, hold your hand and, and gaze into your eyes and watch movies with you. I don't want to do that for, for months and months and months. You know, I, uh, kind of wait, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait up, wait up. When you said to me, you had close calls. What do you really mean? Talk to our audience because we have so many young okay. women out there who um, are doing, going really near to the brink, to the edge. What are you talking about? You're talking about taking off your clothes and almost going full way. Talk to us. Tell Ooh, me the real, okay. what really happened. Talk to me. All right. All right. 
<laughs> okay, well, listen. I never ended up taking off clothes, but definitely uh, very heavy body to body. Okay, make out, making out. You're talking about heavy. making out, right? Okay. It, yeah, and you know, I just not not something that I'm I'm proud of because it you know I could have there there were times where it just got just shy of us taking everything off and just and then all of a sudden something happening like just a oh gosh I can remember one guy okay I'll talk about okay I can remember one guy came I was I was in grad school by this time and I had made up uh, I had made up my mind. So I thought, I said, Lord, you know, I don't want to keep having these close encounters. I really do want to live for you. And I could feel inside that it was grieving him, mm -hmm. you know, and I'd be like, but how come you won't just send me somebody, just send me somebody. But, you know, for the Lord to just send you um, a spouse, have you get married just so that you won't slip up and have sex, there is so much more involved in marriage than that part, okay? Mm -hmm. And if you're not ready, you're not ready. It can end up being a, just a, a true disaster. But there was this, when I was in grad school, for some reason, this seemed to be probably one of the most difficult seasons. I was living in South Carolina um, I was not living on, living on campus, and I I had my own place. This was my first apartment apartment, being on my own and living away from. Well, I lived away from my family when I was an undergrad. I went to Howard University in Washington D.C., but I went to the University of South Carolina, and boy, I tell you, it's like guys that were interested in me in undergrad who never made a move looked me up got in touch with me and came to visit me mm -hmm. i had so many male callers guys that would come they were coming staying at a hotel stay in different places just so that they could come spend time with me and i was feeling so wanted and special mm -hmm. that a guy would you know fly in to see me but that's when, and there was one guy in particular, he'd taken me out to dinner and all this other stuff, but I invited him back to my place. I don't know why I did that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But they got really hot and heavy and something happened mm. where on the floor, on the floor, you know. What do you um, is that? On the floor, what? On the floor, but not, you know, on the floor. But... Okay. Okay. And I, I, you know, this is just, okay, this is honesty, okay, but, um, you know, still nothing that was, was so, right, you know, right. again. We didn't go all the way. We didn't go all the way. Right. No, so none of that. Call. Am I saying, are you saying to me that these close calls, uh, um, the Lord just he showed intervened. up? He showed up. And he would he, intervene. Yes, ma'am. Right. And did your Christian, did you see your Christian life just spiraling in front of you when you almost went draw the, uh, across the line? Did you see your Christian life? I know, in, yeah, I, in this, this instance in particular, there was just a sadness that came over me in the midst of being of intense passion mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's like and then everything went cold mm -hmm. it was like and i remember that happening once before in undergrad mm -hmm. um and it was that one experience in undergrad that when i went cold and it was like i was standing outside of myself mm -hmm. and could feel myself and feel the sadness of god mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that that i just was able to kind of stay on the straight and narrow for you know for I, you know, but it happened again mm -hmm. with this guy coming to visit me in grad school. It was my second year and, you know, on the floor. And I think it was so, it was so intense that I just stopped cold and I began to cry. Okay. He was, he was 
that shook him. Right. And you know, and I said, You gotta you gotta go. He said, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm you know, I'm out. He left. Kylo and he called. Mm -hmm. Are these guys Christians? As well? Well see. See. You know, that's a, that's interesting that you would say to, to say that they believed in God. Mm -hmm. They tell you they believed in God, but 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 walking with a level of intensity. Um, mm -mm. Okay, got and you. and I still made an exception. I still made an exception. Okay, well, I, I just thank God for delivering you from those uh, journey of near miss, <laughs> right? And as a Christian woman now that you have overcome so much in terms of you know having. Uh, pass the test of 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 of, of um, almost almost there um, how is it now really for you how do you deal with nights of loneliness and yeah how do you deal with nights of loneliness um i i i spend time in the presence of God, mm -hmm. because I just have to tell you, and and you know, I'm honest with him about the loneliness. Mm -hmm. um, and then he comes in because there's just nothing, nothing more fulfilling, really, in in being in being in the presence of God, being in the presence of God. I I uh, there's a peace that comes when you take the time to just sit and to get quiet before him. Mm -hmm. But you got to be willing to do that. See, mm -hmm. the thing that I told you at the beginning, you know, the prayer that I prayed um as a kid, you know, I don't feel like I really know you, so I'm not going to say that I love you because I don't really know you, mm -hmm. but I wish that I could. Then he gives me this encounter my life, the, this life's walk journey has been about knowing him, mm -hmm. having a real relationship, mm -hmm. you know, I, and I can't say that I've arrived even now, but mm -hmm. I can say that as I've gotten closer, um, the closer you get, the more that you really start to know him and know his heart. Amen. You know, you wanna you wanna please him, mm -hmm. and even when your heart is is broken in some instances, or you don't always understand, because I am. I mean, if you had told me that I would still be single um, at this at this point in my life with with no children, if you had told me that, I, I never would have believed. You know, years back, and I kept thinking, oh, you know, I go through seasons. Oh, I'm all right. You know, I'm mm -hmm. I'm focusing on career and I'm doing other stuff. I've got time and this and that with this confidence that eventually somebody would come. Well, you know, as the years continue to roll by and then there's still no one and then people kind of start looking at you sometimes mm -hmm. and they're like, hey, you know, something wrong with her or some people that might even be rude enough and ugly enough, cruel mm -hmm. enough to say something like, well, don't you like men? Mm -hmm. Carlo. Yes. Oh. yes. I understand that. I do understand that. And um, question. Mm -hmm. At night, as a human being, at, when you feel as if you really want somebody in your bed to hug you, when you come home on a late night and you're tired, and you feel vulnerable, and your body's saying, yes, I am hot. How do you handle that? I'm going to say again, I go to God. Yes. Because uh, listen to me. There have, there have been, you know, people suggest other ways. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, I've uh, talked to, you know, I've got, Friends that have talked about, you know, sat self pleasure, satisfy self, whatever, what have you, um, and I'm, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not about, I'm not about that. Mm -hmm. uh, even that, 
When you have the spirit of the Lord living on the inside of you, Mm -hmm. you can only go, I mean, and you really, you really, there's a a real desire and a relationship because he's a person. He's Mm -hmm. real. Okay. Mm -hmm. You aren't going to have a peace about deciding, okay, you know what? I'll 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 get the best of both where I, I'll satisfy myself, I'll do whatever, you know, until somebody comes along. Um <clears throat> and I'm older, but I'm at this place now where and it's been God that's brought me to this place mm-hmm. where I can say if I if I go without and if I don't ever, you know, have the the joy of being able to be married and consummate the marriage and be able to enjoy all that, you know, is it going to be the end of the world? No, I would like to, to fulfill my life's purpose, what it is God put me here on the earth to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I do, I hope that having a family, you know, uh, having a husband, maybe adopting children or maybe loving on his children if he already has some. If that's a part of the purpose, I definitely pray so, you know, but I want to be able to do what I was put here to do. No, because I wouldn't advise. So to answer your question, no, in the late nights, and I'm not going to try to act like that has not happened, okay? That that, there has not been a time where, you know, hormones through the roof and Mm -hmm. you got to be careful what conversations you're having with your girlfriends about, you know, honey, you know, or, or what television shows you are watching. Because if you are not guarding your spirit and you let all of that get in, that's what your mind sits on. Whatever your mind is sitting on, whatever you dwell on, that's, that's what's taking root, okay? Mm-hmm. So the enemy, the enemy will start whispering those nothings in your ear, don't you, you know, you need to just go ahead, you know, because you know you, you know, before you know it. So it's all about fortifying, fortifying yourself by being in the presence of the Lord, you know, drinking in his word. Am I perfect with it? No. Surround, but but I, I strive, I press, like Paul says, I press towards the mark, I press. I surround myself with friends that are just as passionate about pleasing God and love him just as much as I do. If you don't have that community, you will really, you, you're you going to have a struggle, mm-hmm. you know? So, um, Kyla, I've heard some young women say they have felt jilted by the Lord, they have waited. And, uh, you know, women who have passed 40, 30, going into their 50s and even 60s, uh, they have said they have felt jilted by the Lord because they have seen other women gone out and given themselves up to men. And they have left the church and they have had their children and somebody found them and they are married now, happily, seemingly happily married now. And so they are saying... Why not? Why do I have to wait? Why not just go and do and find somebody? I don't have, I don't want to stay in the church and then become an old maid. How would you talk to those women? What would you say to them? I can say that I can definitely identify with how you feel. I can say that I have felt the disappointment. I can say that there was a time that I was angry. Um, wondered, Lord, you know, what did I do that I didn't end up with with anybody? You know, what's so wrong with me? There was a time where I couldn't talk about um, not having kids without breaking down into tears. I can remember uh, sitting here, being at home with my mom. I was working on my doctorate going to LSU and uh, there a, a raging storm came through and the power went out and it had been a particularly difficult day and the power went out and we were in the hallway because the weather was so bad. We didn't know if a tornado was coming through or whatever. And so we sat in the hallway for protection and and I, I don't know, the power never came back on, the storm simmered down, but we were still sitting there. And for some reason I got on some tangent and 
this came up about me not being married and not having kids. And I remember saying to her, what's wrong with me? I must be some kind of an awful person that God would not trust me with a child. You know, what mm. did I do? You know, and I just broke down in her arms and she just held me. And I feel like he just put uh, the words in her mouth because, you know, she said, but, and yet you have mothered so many, you, you know, you have taught and you have mentored and he's entrusted you with many, even if he didn't entrust you to raise. And she said, and you've got to trust him. He loves you. No, you're not an awful person. You know, you're my baby, you know, you're just, yeah. and it was so great to have that. But I will say this, that over time, and to say to these women that are feeling this way, um, going out and deciding that you're gonna take matters into your own hands because you don't really understand why there's been a delay mm -hmm. is not the way to go. I have seen what comes from that, Right. okay? I have been, um, a bridesmaid in a number of weddings, and I've been a maid of honor. And I have walked with friends through courtship into marriages and then walked with them through divorces. Yes. Okay. Ooh. I have walked with friends who knew when they were going in that they were making a mistake and, and then walked with them as they had to try to pick up the pieces coming out of it. Mm -hmm. I've had friends that have said to me once they got in it, even though we were all excited and, you know, it didn't look like it was a mistake. Mm -hmm. They would look at me and say, girl, take your time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they yes. would say it just like that. They were like, mm -hmm. do not rush mm -hmm. because after the wedding and after the, you know, real life happens and you had better know that you absolutely love this person that you're with, you got to, in order to be able to stay the course and really be in it because there's so much involved. I, I've i seen, I, I mean, and in one, I'm thinking of one experience in particular, just how traumatic it was for this woman, this young woman, she, she had the child. Mm -hmm. You know, she ended up with a baby, you know, the marriage because she was so worried. But that divorce was ugly. Mm -hmm. It Carla. was ugly. And and you don't want to, you know, you don't want to have to walk through that. Mm -hmm. you know? um, Carla, that's, I, I really, I'm learning from that answer. You know, that's very profound. And I'm sure our listeners are learning as well. And I just want to pause here quickly to remember, remind our listeners to subscribe because we have so many stories like these. And also, I just want to ask this question. As a single woman, if you have had an encounter with other women who are married, who feel threatened by you that you are about to take away their husbands and you are tr you're treated um, with a lot of... Uh, disrespect and isolation and you name it, they don't invite you to places because they feel like you're a threat. How have you dealt with issues like that? I've heard many women have had those experiences. That is a wonderful question. That is a, thank you for, for asking that because yes, that is such a reality. And um, it's unfortunate, but you know, I guess the insecurity sometimes that happens, you you kind of, you can witness, you you witness an insecurity that happens with, with wives, you know, that may say, okay, you know what, you're just a little bit too close, you're just a little bit too this, or you're just you, and I don't really want my husband around you. And I've gone through, I've, I've had a couple of instances where I was like, what do I, I mean, should I just, I'm just not going to wear a lot of makeup and I'm just not going to, I'm never going to talk to him. I'll just talk to her, you know, and I'll, you know, I'm not going to, yeah, in the church, you'd find yeah. it. And in certain, and in certain churches, it's like, now 
to be fair, to look at it from the the viewpoint of of a wife, it can be horrible because there are some women that are shameless, mm. single women that will come in and they are trying to take somebody else's man. Mm. They get they become enamored by pastors and their position and prestige and they picture themselves you know they're looking for someone who's already made mm. you know a, a made man that's that's built up and established and doing well and they want to be on his arm wow where this wife where, where this wife she has worked hard worked with him walked with him and traveled with him to get to the place that he is and now this girl wants to come in and mm -hmm. so i can understand a wife being kind of ready to be like what a fight you i'll cut you, <laughs> you know? but yeah. but on but if 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 i could say to wives you know some of them you know cut some of the single women some slack let the holy spirit speak to you be sensitive. Let him speak to you concerning because you don't want to end up injuring some, you know, unassuming single woman that's just coming in who loves the Lord, that's just trying to live her life. And she doesn't want your man. Mm. She just wants God. You know, mm -hmm. we don't want to have to feel like we can't fully live and fully, you know, be in the church because we've got to be so careful so that you don't worry. Now, I do believe in church etiquette. I believe that, you know, you you should be conscious about some things. You shouldn't be hugging all over and squeezing all over, mm -hmm. you know, and things like that. Yeah, be polite, handshake, things like that. But I shouldn't be, I shouldn't feel like I can't even say hello and talk or, you know, I've seen in some churches, I'm going to tell you this honestly, where I guess they're, they, they do something, they teach the men something called an eye bounce. I heard oh, about that, eye no. bounce, yes. where what they do is they never lay their eyes fully. They never look at a, a, a woman completely in the <laughs> eye. So they'll be looking past you. And I'm like, Listen, if you are that weak, oh okay, my God. you can't look somebody in the eye and say, good day, sister so-and-so, good morning, how are you doing? You feel like you're going to fall, then I, I got to ask, come on, what is your walk? Do you even trust the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you? I think it's very rude to do right. something like that. Right. And out in the, in, the, in the marketplace, out in the business world, out in places like that, People have to interact and look and shake hands. You're not going to have, men are going to have to to do business with women and this eye bounce stuff, mm -hmm. that's not going to happen. Thank so you. I'm sorry. Thank you for introducing me to that. I've never heard, never heard that before. Um, Kyla, thank you, Dr. Kyla Pitcher, for being so candid. And I just want to ask you one more question before we end this session, and that is, if you could rewrite the script of your single journey, what would it be? How would you do it? Um, I think that I would have, I would have probably um, surrendered even more a little sooner uh, to, to God and um not gone back and forth because i really believe that that i did a lot of middle ground walking which is why i kind of would have my slip you know i'd slip up and you know be pining away saying why am i married and you know let somebody in my life and uh then realize that i wasn't happy like that and and see that time was wasted. So I think I would have um I, I would have tried to press in and get more into into my purpose and the will of God sooner. As a single, as a single. Also, I'll say this. Um I think I would have let him prepare me more mm -hmm. to be someone's wife because I think I resisted that. And I think that there is a level of preparation. Mm -hmm. That definitely has to take place. I don't think that you just jump into marriage. Mm -hmm. You don't. 
Kylo. Oh, oh yes. Before you continue quickly, um, as the time is going, are you still looking for a husband? And quickly, just tell us what are some of the your deal breakers? What are you, you know? What are you looking for, really? Well, yes, I do still want to be married. I have, you know, I haven't given up on the idea of having a spouse. So yeah, I would. And and if I am blessed to to meet, you know, that special someone, my 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 prayer is that he has completely that he's given his heart and life to the Lord. You know, that he's someone that really does love God and listens to him, that he hears the voice of God, that he's directed by the spirit of God. Um, Amen. And <laughs> I know you're closing out, but that, you know, and that he believes in walking in purity Amen. until the time. Yeah. Amen. Until the time. Amen. All right. Before we wrap up, one last thing. What do you have to say to our single women or single young women? Anything. You are God's precious jewel. If you could only know how excited he gets about you, you are princesses and you are worth being pursued. You are worth uh them taking the time, a man taking the time to do it the right way. Value yourself the way God values you. When he looks at you, he sees a princess, he sees a queen, he sees his daughters, you are his daughters. And that's the truth. Carry yourself like it, live like it, and, and be comfortable in your skin. Live your life to the fullest. Please live it because life is short and none of this is, you know, there's no guarantee. So you want to make sure that you've lived, that you've absolutely lived it to the fullest. I love you, even though I don't know you. I love you, sisters in Christ, and I wish you well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pitcher, for taking the time out to share with our listeners on God's school your journey of singleness. And I just want to congratulate you for staying pure because the, the, the passage that comes to mind when I listen to your story is in Samuel when um, the Lord said to Elijah, many, many have not bowed down to Baal. There are many who have not bowed down to Baal because many single women feel that there are only one who are, who are left who have not gone out in the world and given themselves away before finding that husband that the Lord has for them. So I just want to congratulate you on that. And to our listeners, thank you for tuning in to Raw and Unedited Stories on God's Scoop. And remember to subscribe, subscribe, yes, and share and like. Have a phenomenal day.